Okay, welcome back everyone to our second lecture on uh, church and ministry administration. Uh, we've been talking about uh, staff management, how we take care of uh, church staff, how do we work with them, some challenges that we might face, all of that. So um, we talked about dealing with difficult situations. There would be difficult situations and uh, we have to try and help our staff. Sometimes it uh, it could mean we have to take action, so on. Any questions? That? Okay. Um, then when people are leaving, we do our HR person. Um, she does an exit interview, uh, meaning just to find out from them about their experience. Do they have any feedback for us? Uh, to improve, etc. So that's uh, part of the exit. Like I also mentioned, we have a farewell, so we make it as you know, uh, celebratory as possible. Bless people as they move to a new op opportunity. Uh, last few things on uh, employee uh, staff management would be: we need to follow local local government rules in taking care of our staff. So there are these labor laws. Uh, example would be uh, some, some things that are mandated by law. One is ev every staff, every full-time person, uh, we must pay what is called as employee provident fund. It's a requirement, like every organization must pay. That is for their retirement. So we have to follow that. Like even many the other I mean, organizations, they don't do it, then later on they get into trouble. Right? So you should be careful. Follow the labor laws. Right? So one is employee provident fund. Second labor requirement is uh, what is called as POSH, prevention of sexual harassment in the workplace. So we have to have this. They have some guidance. Like uh, you have to have a POSH committee. You have to educate all your staff. And if an incident happens, uh, it has to be reviewed and reported. So it is a requirement by law for every organization. So since we are an organization, we have to follow the laws. So this is for our staff. It's not for, but actually because we are a church, even if an incident happens in the congregation, it comes under this rule prevention of sexual harassment. So we have to be careful. And um, uh, that is if our staff is involved. Like if it's just between congregation people, that is a different story. If our staff is involved, if even if it, any incident happens outside, and for us, it is outside means it's a big congregation people. So if our staff is involved, that also has to be reported. So that is in place, you know. So we have to educate our staff. Once a year, we have to have uh, training. Uh, and we have to file. The, some documents have to be filed. Training has happened. This is the team, all those things. So that also, that uh, labor law, we have to follow. Um, these are two main things. Uh, giving money towards their retirement and uh, uh, this posh, prevention of sexual harassment. Uh, thing has to be there. All right. Now, here are some questions. You know, what do we do to help people grow within the organization? Like I said, we provide training, opportunities, uh, mentoring. And we usually ask people, what is your vision? You know, so what do you want to do? So even in our review, our annual review, so what is your vision? Then we try to align their work so that it all matches, so that they are happy doing what they want to do as their life's calling, and they're also doing the work within the church. So both should match. And then we try to provide them resources, feedback, and so on. Now here is a very big question, especially in church. How do you separate personal life and their work? Because in the ministry, sometimes all everything gets muddled. <laughs> It's almost like almost like a doctor's life, right? If you're a doctor, medical doctor, you could be on call anytime. So, 
you may be in the hospital from what time to what time you go home you might get a call and then you have to come you have to so like that so for a church and ministry it actually gets uh, quite intertwined your personal life and your church life it's thing and so but we try to do our best to keep some sort of a separation so that people have time for their family people have time for their children like that otherwise what will happen is in the name of ministry they sacrifice family and children and it is a big problem so how can we help you know and, and again within this there are so many different scenarios like uh, for example i will just mention a few uh, suppose somebody who's working at church, uh, they have their own ministry outside. We allow that. That means you are a uh, staff in the church, you're working here, but you may have your own ministry outside. Um, it's okay. Right? We will not interfere in what you're doing. It's fine. But at the same time, don't bring that into the church. In the mean, in the sense, we must we don't allow people to use their place and position in the church to promote their own ministries, uh, to promote uh, or to raise funds. Now, uh, some and this has happened in the past. Example, you know, somebody. So we have example. We have a mailing list. We have so many people on a mailing list. Of, we have uh, their mobile numbers, everything we have. Sometimes people have come and asked us for the sake of their business or for the sake of their own ministry. Can you send an email to everybody to promote that? Our answer is always no. Why? First of all, um, the information that has been given to us has been given to all people's church to use for our work. If we send your um, email or we promote your business or your ministry, then everybody else in the church will also come and ask us to do the same thing. We can't say yes to one and no to all the others. If we say yes to you, we have to say yes to everybody else. That is being fair. But we can't do that. We can't keep promoting everybody's business, everybody's ministry. Everybody has something happening outside. We can't promote it. So our uniform answer to everybody is no. And then we also are very careful when they want to promote their own ministry in the church. Because people get confused. They get confused. Why? Because this person is a staff or a part of the ministry at All People's Church. They're also doing something outside. So they get confused. Is that work which they're doing outside, is that part of ABC or is it their own? They get confused. So you say, hey, let's not confuse the people. What you do on your own, you do it on your own. But don't bring and promote that here because people get confused. You know, So uh, no fundraising, no pro promotions, no competition uh, within the church between ministries. Uh, sometimes people are serving at church may have a poor testimony outside. Then we have to address that matter depending on what it is, you know. If it's like drinking and so on, then we have to tell them, please step down, so on. Sometimes family interferes in the church, you know. Uh, uh, they want to control their church staff to get their own agenda done. So one person is working in the church, but their family will come to us thinking the rest of us will also do what they want because their member is in working for the church, you know, so, uh, re making requests, special requests, uh, this, that. So no, you know, okay, your person, your family members working here, that's it. Uh, every, we treat everybody in the congregation, say, no special preference, just because your husband, your wife, or your son here is working here, you get special treatment, no. Everybody's treated the same way. So these kind of things we have to watch over. Another one would be uh, family constraints. You know, wife expects husband to be at home all the time. Oh, you're working for church? No, so Aram, so you come home. They 
No, if you're working for church, church has work to be done. You know, we expect everybody to work 40 hours. Uh, sometimes they may have to travel, they may be asked to do certain things. The person cannot be home all the time. So those kinds of things. Uh, yeah, so we try to separate this and also we try to respect their family time. So if somebody says they're going on vacation, one of our church staff, then we'll do our best that during vacation, don't contact them. We won't message them, we won't email them, won't, unless it is an emergency. Right? We are respecting their time. Right? Okay, they are on vacation. Or, uh, yeah. So, like, or in the evening. So, we are working in the evenings, they go home. Try not to disturb them when they have gone home. Unless it's an emergency. If it's an emergency, yeah, you know, we have to call something. And those emergencies are there, they do happen. But it is not every day. Yeah, sometimes there'll be an emergency. But we respect. You go home. I'm not going to call you, I'm not going to message you, I'm not going to trouble you. And we respect all the staff like that. Okay? Don't uh, trouble people outside of office hours, okay? unless it's an emergency. So what are we doing? We are saying that, hey, uh, we are respecting your time with your family. We're not going to disturb you. So they know if they get a call, that means something has uh, there is some uh, emergency, you know, somebody passed away or we need to go visit somebody some in the hospital or something. Yeah, then it's an emergency, we have to do it. Anytime, any day or night, we have to go. Other than that, we respect the time of our staff. Once they leave work, we don't disturb you. So it works both ways. You know, tell them to respect the church and the congregation. Don't bring those things in here. And we don't disturb them when they go. So we try to balance that. And um, last last point also is, how do we pastor church staff? And again, this is also another difficult thing. That means the people who are working, they're, they're employees, but they're also members of con the congregation. So. I have to speak to them, or we as church pastors, we have to speak to them as employees, and sometimes we have to deal with them as pastors. Right? So that, the differentiating the two uh, is something not easy. In fact, even last week, <laughs> one of our staff came, and she said, uh, I want to talk to you. Then I said, see, if it is about your work, you have to go and speak to the pastor whose team you are. If it's personal, you can come and talk to me as a pastor. So I have to, because she's working for another pastor, which means I don't want to interfere with that work. Right? She's reporting to somebody else. So if it's about work, you report to that pastor. If it is about your personal life or your Anything? Then, you, as a pastor, you can talk to me. I will, I will talk. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then she went and she went and spoke because it was actually a work-related matter, and she thought she can talk to me. But I said, no, I won't interfere with it because you're reporting to that pastor. I don't want to interfere with that work. You have to go there. So then she understood you know, the difference. Sometimes people get confused, right? So uh, that also we have to make clear, like. Uh, work related. So, uh, if if people are reporting to me, and I'm talking to them about their work, yeah, it's work related. At the same, pe person may have some other spiritual needs or family needs, things like that. Okay, that time I'll talk to you as a pastor, and uh, there I can, you know, we deal differently. Here I may be very strict. I may, you know, say this has to be done. This has been all that. So that. Um, you're relating to the same person, but for people to understand that difference is, is a challenge. Sometimes people don't, they mix both. And so we need to clarify that. Now I'm speaking to you as a 
as your employer or as your leader. Now I'm speaking to you as a pastor. I'm dealing with certain things. So uh, we have to differentiate that. Yeah, uh, that's also a challenge. But you know, eventually people understand that, and it works out. Okay, so uh, this is a short lesson here on staff management, an important part of any church, any ministry. Do you, and does anyone have any questions before we go to the next lesson? Justin, please go ahead. So, Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, I, we can. Yeah. So, Pastor, is there an opportunity open now or in the past where people, especially youngsters, for them to voluntarily or spend time willingly with the pastors to observe and learn as in their Saturdays when they are free or Fridays when they are free. So just to spend mm -hmm. time with the pastoral team and learn and observe what they're doing and how they serve. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have like, a, uh, I'll just leave what we have now, it may not necessarily uh, be directly related to what you're saying, but one is we do have an internship program where uh, people after they finish college or after they do either 12th or after they do uh, you know, any time that they want to intern, they can intern. Uh, so they apply, uh, telling us which area they're interested in. Of course, it, there's an, again an interview process for the internship and it's, it's all a paid internship. So that is available. and. Uh, some people have joined us coming through the internship internship program. They intern with us for about six months. Uh, we see their work, they see our work, they like us, we like them, they're happy, then they become staff. So that was them. The second thing is uh, I also um, meet with youth leaders uh, every quarter. So youth leaders are people, uh, let's say, they're most of them, most, not all of them, most of them are like in their 20s. A few of them may be in early 30s, but most of them are in their 20s. And these are youth leaders from all our locations. And we meet once a quarter, where uh, I, it's a, usually a Saturday evening, like 5 to 8 or something, 5 to 7 with dinner. So it's more a time of interaction. I just We just said we discuss a topic. Uh, we let them ask questions. Um, the whole goal is to have that interaction and also uh, in an informal setting, uh, nurture them, discuss with them. So we do that once a quarter. But very specifically, what you have asked, where they come and be with us, we don't have that. Uh, where they, you know, like they come and spend a Saturday or a Friday or a Saturday with us. Uh, we don't have that. Uh, but what we try to do is when we, whenever you know, we try to do things together, like when you go on mission trips and other things, then. They travel with our pastors on different mission trips. So it gives them an opportunity to work alongside our pastors, to serve alongside our pastors, uh, uh, observe, and also serve. So that is there. But specifically what you asked, we don't have that uh, as of now. And um, yeah, maybe the closest to it is that internship that I can think of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even internships and also the mission trips that uh, that clarified for me, Pastor. So even mission trips, they can take a week off or something, and then they can learn. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Okay. I have another question, Pastor. Go ahead, go ahead. This is a sensitive question. So is there is there a time where people only want to be ministered by particular pastors? Like we have many lady pastors as well as uh, pastors and senior pastor. So sometimes it might be very difficult to deal with such people. They might want to take their opinion from you or a particular pastor. So uh, when it's women and men, so there are some struggles even as you minister. So how do we handle such complications, Pastor? Uh, sorry, Justin, I didn't clearly understand your question. It was the audio on our side. Can you just repeat uh, what you said? Uh, no. Please? So what, yeah, what I was asking was so. There are people in the church or the congregation who want to be ministered per, on a personal level or they want to learn something from only a particular pastor. They might be going through some challenges or something. But then we have lady pastors as well as senior pastor and the entire pastor team where men and women pastors are available. But then lady pastors can't handle certain things beyond a certain level. 
So, and it's also the vice versa. So, how do we handle such situations as we minister to our congregation pastor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, one is, uh, so generally speaking, uh, any congregation person, any person in our congregation across all locations can request a meeting or request to meet with anyone in the any of anyone in the pastoral team so there are people for example so okay I, i'm i'm mostly at central uh, but there are people from other locations who will specifically come and say i want to meet you and you know we schedule a time they come and meet and uh, or we may do it on zoom uh, so i do spend time and uh, if it is a and if it is a lady uh, then yeah, we, I may meet with them once or twice. And then if, if they need ongoing help, that is when we, you know, we would send them to uh, other people. In some cases, uh, you know, say for, for me, some cases, I have been meeting, not regularly, but off and on, uh, over years with even certain ladies who need guidance. Uh, uh, so especially in their work or in the ministry. But it is not like every month or anything, maybe in a year, two times, they'll come and meet me uh, just for advice and input on their work or on their ministry. And that is fine. You know, so it's not like, uh, and so that input has been going on like for many years. Uh, it is more of, OK, you're in the right direction, go. or. If they're having some problems, we'll discuss, guide them. So that is ongoing, and that's okay because it's not like you know they're meeting with me every month or it's not so frequent. Maybe in a year, like I said, two times they reach out for uh, specific guidance as far as their work or ministry is concerned. So like that, there are few ladies who have their own ministries, who have their own work happening outside, and they come to me when as and when they need some input and that's that's fine that's we are all of us are open to that but if it's something like you know more frequent regular then we always guide them to a lady pastor or a, a counselor so to answer your question any congregation member can access any of our pastoral team but then there are some guidelines both to protect ourselves and also the the, the people uh, that we, you know, implicitly follow. Uh, but there are also these, uh, I don't know what you call it, exceptions, or there are these better ways of working where, you know, we do nurture even people of the opposite gender uh, over, over over years. You know, and I can think of certain ladies whom, you know, I was there when they actually started their work from scratch. Today their work ministry has grown. And they still talk to me now and then for their guidance and input and just continue. So uh, that happens and that goes on. But it's, um, you know, it's, uh, like I said, once or tw uh, maybe two times, two or three times a year, not more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. I have one more question. Can sure. I ask? Please go ahead. So is there a time, Pastor, when you were uh, praying on a personal level for our church? I know the vision is very clear and everything we know about the vision and everything. So is there a time particularly God has revealed something to your heart about something like the churches in Revelation for APC, like a rebuke or a warning or an encouragement or a commendation that you can remember of in the past years, till now, up till now, that you can share with us? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think, um, yeah, to answer your question, I would say like, that's something, uh, it's continuous. That means I try to uh, always stay open to the Lord on you know, what we should do, what we should change, what direction we should go to, uh, so on. Uh, it's like always stay open to the Lord. And it would come through in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sermons that we bring, in, the, uh, in, in whatever ministries we start or things like that. You know, it'll come through in those areas. Um, of course, we don't make a big deal of it. Like, I don't come and tell the congregation the Lord spoke to me and told me to do this. And because then that makes it very sensational, and it also makes it very comp 
puts you know puts a lot of pressure on the congregation mm -hmm. if i stand up and say lord told me we should do this mm -hmm. but instant i just believe we should just do it you know very quietly and if it's from the lord people will catch it you know, those who are supposed to be part of it, they'll catch it. We don't need to be sensational about it. Mm -hmm. And so like that, it, it, it happens all the time. It's always happening. The directions we go, the things we start, or the mm -hmm. things we stop even, uh, it's there. You know, there's a continuous direction from the Lord. Um, and then there is also uh, the word of the Lord being brought for every year. It's something that we want to inspire the congregation as, as the Lord would seek to direct us mm -hmm. but if you know and i can i guess i can tell you stories from the beginning till now but uh, maybe one story would be you know what we did during COVID, uh, which was quite monumental meaning uh this year this was uh 2021 i think so COVID started in 2020 mm -hmm. correct 2020 right and then we closed down bible college sent everybody home a lot of things are happening. 2021, when this whole the whole pandemic got really serious, and a lot of people around us were being affected. Uh, I remember uh, at that time uh, we were trying to do. You know, we were having uh, our, we did 40 days of prayer, all of that. We said, okay, what can we do to help other pastors, other churches? So we did a Zoom call uh, for the pastors, and so early 2021 we helped churches in Bangalore. So um, again, I forget the actual numbers, mm -hmm. but in the in January of 2021, uh, I, I, I don't know the numbers now, I can't remember, but I think it was maybe like 15 lakhs of rupees we gave to so many churches in Bangalore to help them restart. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, but then after restarting again, like this, we call it the second wave came it was very severe second wave everything everybody shut down lots of people were suffering yeah. and we were praying what do we do that's the time i remember very clearly you know waking up one morning and with these six strategies like these are the six things you need to do mm -hmm. but because we were working at a city-wide level the first thing i did was to email the leaders in the city asking them for permission said you know if you give us permission ABC will go ahead and execute these six things, which is sending money to pastors, sending money to families, sending money to feed communities, mm -hmm. uh, sending money to pay for um, school education and tuition of you know parents, uh, families who are affected, uh, helping mission hospitals, and uh, uh, yeah, about six things. Mm -hmm. So, in all eight leaders in the city at that time sent. To, replied and said go ahead so within you know two days and then i called we did a meeting with the church staff we said this uh we had to do this everybody agreed everybody was working from home and we started it you know we went ahead with it um and that was it was like a you know that whole night i couldn't sleep i woke up in the morning it was a very clear strategy and everything was falling in place you know like the leaders in the city approved it uh, I took it to the church staff. Everybody were ready to work. Uh, then we shared with the congregation. And then in that, um, uh, again, now, I don't know, the three, four months, I think, that we did it, we sent out from Bangalore, we sent out six crore rupees, I think, yeah, mm. all across India. Every state in India, pastors from every state in India reached out to us. Uh, and we had a team of about, 20 some people working together and we sent out like close to six crore rupees within that uh, you know whatever that i think four months or something that was to help people across india so if you know that's that's just quite a big thing uh, but i remember it was a very clear word direction and it all came together so beautifully during covid you know and that's just one example of, yeah Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor, sure. for sharing. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay, any questions? Yes, Francis. Pastor, could you please explain the leaves of this chaff, like combo of leave? You ah. mentioned the vacation. So could yes. you please explain like how the leaves of leaves, this chaff are yeah. happening? So 
for all our staff we have every year annually so every every 12 months every calendar year all our staff get four weeks leave paid leave uh, that means four weeks with 20 days 20 days paid leave they can take it anytime plus they get six days of sick leave or we call it sick leave or emergency leave right so basically it is 20 plus six those those are paid leave so if you're sick you say i'm sick okay or some emergency happens you have to take a family member to the hospital or something okay fine so 20 days of paid vacation leave six days of emergency sick leave and 11 days which are government holidays so that is from the government side public holidays government side so totally if you see 20 plus 11 plus 6 37 days of paid leave in the year that is uh, for every staff then what we have is called comp off comp off means if you work more than 40 hours in a week and many of our staff do that not purposely but because there is so much work if you have to do more than 40 hours if you do more than 40 hours then in in, in blocks of four four hours so if you do 44 hours you can take four hours off the following week because you've already done it before or if it's eight, 48 hours you can take eight hours the next week you can um so in reality what happens is many of our staff work extra uh, so many people have like lots of comp off but they don't actually take it because if you take it, it means you'll be on leave for a long time so you can't because work has to be done but whenever they want they will plan it in a way that they may take off another time like that but that is also there in the past we used to have um paid overtime that means if you work more than 40 hours you will get paid for it but that was a little too uh, too much of a financial burden on the church to pay all those extra hours we, we you know we couldn't do that so that's when we changed and said instead of us paying you you extra hours you work you can take it off at your convenience so long as the work your work does not get affected so you decide when you want to take so we have this thing called comp off and so people take they may take half a day off or if they work more but they carry it uh, anytime during the year you can take comp off but it all you have to do it within the year so when a new year starts only your vacation leave can be carried forward if you haven't used your vacation leave this year you can use it next year but you can't carry forward your comp off you have to use it when the new year starts everything is reset start again so that's those kind of things are there and the fact is everybody doesn't use their comp off you know uh, it's not possible because uh, thing. but uh, but it's there yeah, yeah. your question <laughs> so i have a question about internship internship yeah, yeah pastor. so like uh as we are in college mm. uh, from college we can't do internship right? yes because we have our classes and all. yes yes but like Pastor, if someone really want to do if there is anything uh, for that like or oh, while they are in college while they're studying or after they finish while they're studying so here's the thing what happened Chirag. Uh, before the pandemic we did have internship available for current Bible college students. So there were actually some Bible college students who were working with us in the church office. So after class, they'll go, they'll work. But here's what here's the problem we found out. So we did that for I think two years. You know, it was a paid internship. But here's what we found out when our Bible college, when we opened it up for Bible college students, one was we couldn't provide it for all the students 
Correct. All the students can't go to church office and work. We didn't have that much of work. So it was only few. So that put a little uh, unpleasantness between the students. Our intention was good. We started this internship for our Bible college students. Few went and worked, so they were getting paid. But other students were not. They did not get internship. So that, that ill feeling, no? Oh, that person is getting paid. He's working. I'm not working. Then they said, can we go outside and get some job? <laughs> so then we stopped it. So we actually ran it for two years. But this was the result. Like uh, We saw that the, between the students, it was causing problems. And then also for the students who were doing internship, we felt their attention was more on making money than studies. Because they were waiting. I go over there, <laughs> do some work, I learn money. Uh, so what we brought in as a good thing, uh, we ran it for two years and we observed it had these two negative effects. Student became The students were working, they focused on the money, and then the students were not earning, they were feeling bad, and then they want to go get a job out. So then we said, we'll stop it. So then we said, okay, after college, you can apply. You know, so we changed that. Yeah, but uh, that's the thing. Now, once we have our own campus, you know, when we build our own facility and move Bible College there, uh, again, we have to see. We, I mean, we're still discussing about what to do because there'll be a lot of work there. But again, it may not be for all the students, and and we don't want to, you know, recreate the same problems that we had seen before. But how can we engage students in a very meaningful way? And so we're still discussing that about what we will do once we have our own campus and things like that. Yeah. But we did try it and we saw these problems. Well, sir, after college, like they can apply. So there is uh, any criteria for like. OK. Main thing for internship is uh, they should see one is we are observing our students while they are here, how they are spiritually and so on. If they're really serious about their call, serious about it, we're observing. And then they're also helping, like in the Bible college and on Sunday. So that's why we moved everybody to North. So you'll have some things to do. Central, there's not much to do. So we are observing. And so for applying for internship, main thing is there should be a match in the work to what you really like to do. Right? There should be a match. So example, if somebody is good in administration and then there's need for administration, we put them there. It'll work out. If somebody is good in media or somebody is good in I know, whatever, it's like, so now Jeffina, for instance, she just graduated and she joined us for Catalyst. So, so there, it is a match. Like she likes to work with children. Uh, we definitely need a lot more people who will go and work with children. So there was a nice match. She's happy doing her work, so we took her. Or uh, like Abhinas and what's her name? Nirantari. Again, there was a match, right? For Abhinas, we needed somebody here on campus. He was willing to stay and work, so we took him. Uh, then for Nirantari, passed and Nancy. You now Nirantari studied with us many years ago. Then she came back. Uh, to do her, I think she did the short term Bible college and maybe third year, I, I forget the details anyway. So, Pastor Nancy needed somebody to help her with the admin. She had interviewed other people, um, but then because Nirantari has studied with us, that was a big plus. Right? She studied here, so she knows how the Bible college runs. And uh, so we said, okay, she can join. Like that. So if there's a match, right, between what they want to do, what we want to do, we definitely um, take and we give preference to our students because our students have, have been with us for three years. They have studied with us, you know. And then some of them go and start churches. So many of our outreach churches, if one of our students say, I want to go start a church, then we definitely help them. As long as they are, like, we see that they are serious, right? If they're here playing playful and all, then they even say, start a church, they won't. But if they're very serious about the call, 
So all our, not all, but many of our outreach churches have started like that. You know, uh, Baloda Bazaar, Deepak Ranjan, uh, Malse in Gujarat, um, Kailash, then um, Hurmila, um, uh, Rajesh in Nasik, um, then uh, the other Ajay and uh, I'm not getting their names, but in Varanasi, they study the short term Bible college. So almost all our outreach churches were started by our students who came and said, I want to go and start. And we saw here that they were good. In some cases, they worked with us. For example, Deepak Ranjan, he graduated from here. For one year, he ran our short term Bible college in. Uh, that year we were doing it in Champa, in Chhattisgarh. So he ran that for us, like over there. So we saw he was very good working. So after that, he said, I want to go and start a church in my village or my town. So we helped him. Start. So like that, these churches have started. Yeah. The other thing we are very careful of is we don't want to disturb. Uh, we don't want to. Uh, if our students have come from another church, right? Because our commitment to the pastor is, if you send them, we send you send them back. We don't want the pastor to feel they took away my <laughs> my uh, disciple or my you know. So that is our that is our, again another thing we are very careful because if if a pastor has sent somebody to be trained, we say you go back and work with your pastor. Unless the pastor gives us permission, saying, yeah, he wants to start a church, you can help him, then it's okay. But if the pastor is sent here, we always send them back. So you go report back to your pastor. Because if we lose our trust with the pastors around the country, then they will stop sending people. You know, they will tell others also, don't send anybody to ABC. <laughs> you know, so that trust we try to maintain and be respectful. Yeah. Okay. Any question? Prince, you have a question, please? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, we can hear you. So, uh, Pastor, like, uh, when, like, regarding to this question, like, it's a add on question, like, some people, when they come to us, and if we see a match uh, in a certain work area, we can take them, but how to uh, respond when uh, we can't see any match, but we know they have the heart to serve. Uh, they are very hardworking. Their conduct was good. But when we see uh, they don't have any match, but they may have interest to work in certain area, but they may not have the knowledge in it. Hmm. Or uh, they may be uh, freshers for it. They don't know how to work in it. So how to uh, handle those situations, how to respond to them? Yeah. Should we uh, tell, like, go back, learn and come, or should we take them, train them, or how it is? Um, in some cases, we have trained them. So for example, if you think of Zeloni, he was a Bible college student. And he had an interest in media. But at that time, he was like a like you use the word fresher. He was a real fresher in media. But he had a good heart and uh, he had studied with us for two years. And uh, so we trained him. We literally trained him. So uh, after he, and of course, with permission from his pastor. So he had, he had come from APC Kohima. So Pastor Hurmila had sent him. So that also we had to be careful because. Uh, she's our own pastor. She sent him, and then we asked her, "Is it okay if we train him?" And he worked with us. She was very happy, and so we actually trained him. And so now he's doing well. Now he, you know, is doing very well. And so he started from almost nothing to come up to where he is. Um, and uh, yeah, so in some cases, if like you're saying, they have the potential, they are willing to work hard. Uh, and we do take them and train them, and uh, and 
yeah, it's it's worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Vastu. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll stop here. Next week we'll get into our next chapter, which is on volunteers. So, working with volunteers is also another big thing. So, this chapter had to deal with church staff. Next is volunteers, and volunteers, like I said, they are more volunteers than church staff. There are about three hundred volunteers. How do we work with them? Uh, how do we, you know, oversee volunteers serving in the ministry? We'll discuss that next. Okay. Uh, we'll close for today. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll connect next week.